you mentioned some foods. What are the difference between, you know, a mineral from a chelated form and just from a food source in okay. terms of how our body sure. organizes? Here's the thing. Uh, mattering on the food, okay? Uh, typical, your, you know, vegetables and fruits and things like that, the uh, form of the mineral is going to be basically an inorganic type of mineral, less, more of a salt type form, okay? So the absorption from those foods of that type of mineral is usually lower. Uh, however, if you take uh, and eat fish or beef or chicken, most of the mineral in those forms would be in some type of chelated form. Mm -hmm. and so, so typically the absorption rate from a mineral in, let's say, uh, a hamburger would be better than the absorption rate from uh, broccoli uh, because mm -hmm. of that. How does your body recognize a chelate and, and what happens when you take one internally? Well, here's the thing. It's not so much that your body, quote, recognizes it. It's the the way the chelate uh, is from a uh, chemical standpoint, if you will, because I was talking about the way it was formed. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned the word stability constant. The chelate stability constant is such that it could go through the stomach and not break apart. And that's important because this is what leads to the chelate not having the typical side effects that you would get from ferrous sulfate, uh, things like that, because those things, quote, ionize, come apart in the stomach, and it's the ionized iron that causes people to get the side effects that people might complain about, gastric upset, things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, zinc, for instance, has a high instance of nausea inducement when you take it in a non-chelated form. And then, so the chelate stays intact for a longer period of time, so it doesn't react and uh, to cause the side effects, but also typically people like to take their supplements with a meal. Sure. And if you take it with breakfast, uh, it's going to have cereals possibly, which have phytates, and other vegetables have things that are oxalates, and these things bind to, uh, when, like I mentioned, ferrous sulfate ionizes, these things will grab on also eventually to that charged iron and cause it not to be absorbed, interfere with absorption, because the chelate stays intact further down. It does not get its uh, absorption interfered with by what you're taking in as foods. So, mm -hmm. And then once the chelate gets to a certain point, it doesn't necessarily completely ionize. It will start to ionize, and then the, uh, at the mucosa of the gut, which is the lining of your intestine that you have to be absorbed across, the chelate will give up the, the ligand, the glycine or whatever, and go through the mucosal wall at that point, and you have the absorption. So the other thing about this is the chelate has a longer part of the intestine to be absorbed in because of its chemistry. Okay. So you're going to get greater absorption, and you're, and you're not going to have uh, the um, charged iron or magnesium or calcium that's not absorbed because you're not going to absorb 100% as you know of anything. Sure. So any non-absorbed iron or whatever that's, you know, free, that's what's causing the side effects. Whereas, you're, you know, since you're not really doing a whole lot of uh, ionization, if you will, of uh, fer ferrous visglycinate, ferrocal, iron chelate, so side effects are lower. In fact, that's one of the things that I hear most often about uh, people who are, especially people who are expecting uh, you know, they take prenatal vitamins that have iron, and, you know, women uh, often have, you know, different uh, gastric problems during pregnancy, mm -hmm. and uh, the last thing they need to do is be taking a supplement that's going to further cause gastric side effects. Mm -hmm. And I've had people who told me they cannot take iron. Uh, it causes them to be constipated. They get uncomfortable feelings in their GI tract and whatnot. They go and take Ferrocal, our, our, our uh, ferrous bisglycinate chelate. Psh, they say, it's a miracle. Yeah, I, I can't believe it. I can take this form of iron. So the doctors like it because they get better compliance from their patients when they use that type of iron mm -hmm. because the side effects are so small, yet the absorption is very good. Mm -hmm. And we've got a lot of clinical studies out there that have been done over the years demonstrating the, the various advantages of the true 
chelates. Mm -hmm. So it's part of what you're talking about, bioavailability, mm -hmm. and, and, and how much better your, does, does yeah. your body absorb the chelates better, better than, than maybe different Absolutely, and it's all related to, to the, the chelate structure, mm -hmm. you know, and the uh, fact that it has a greater portion of the GI tract to be absorbed, and it's absorbed, you know, there's some controversy. Some people say it's some portion of the chelate is absorbed intact, uh, and there is some evidence of that, but for the most part, it's when it's transferred across the mucosal lining into the mucosa cell, the absorption cells, that's where the uh, separation takes place. So, okay. so it's high, the chelates are going to give you higher bioavailability, better tolerance, uh, less GI uh, interaction with other foods and medications. You know, iron, for instance, will interfere f the ferric or ferrous forms that are ionized will interfere with the absorption of certain drugs. For instance, one uh, is called lenoxin or dig digoxin, which is a medication for your heart. And uh, it's known that iron, charged ionized iron, will decrease the percent absorption of that medication, which that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's that ionized part that causes that. So.